In this video, we're going to look at C++'s standard template library support for the queue data structure. So I've brought up C++.com's documentation on the queue, and we can see here that it's what's called a container adapter. So what that means is we have some sort of an underlying or backing data structure, and a container adapter just constrains the use of that underlying data structure that's being used. So in this case, uh, the, the two choices for the backing data structure, the underlying data structure, is the deck and the, and the linked list. And we haven't talked about either one of those just yet in any of my videos, but I'll have videos soon enough that uh, discuss this idea of the deck and the linked list. If we uh, go down here to the bottom of this documentation about the queue, you can see the, the member functions. So you have a way to construct a queue. You have a member function to test to see if the queue is empty or not to get the size of the queue so it returns how many elements we have or how many items we've enqueued into our queue. Uh, we can get the front item in our queue so that would be the oldest item in the queue. We can get the back item in the queue so that would be the newest item in the queue since it's first in first out. And we have push and pop here so they don't use the terms enqueue and dequeue even though that's what push means. Push is the enqueue operation and pop is the dequeue operation so they're using the same terminology that we saw for the stack, even though when we think about a push here for the queue, that's just simply adding a particular element uh, to the end of the queue, to the tail of the queue, and the pop would remove an element or item from the front of the queue. So let's go over to Eclipse and write a small program where we make use of this queue class template and uh, see how it works. Okay, so I'm over here in Eclipse now, and I've already created a project, and I've also created a CPP file called QSTL. And I've also done a, a pound include for IO stream, the uh, using namespace standard, and also I've created uh, the main function, even though it doesn't have a, a body yet. What we need to do in order to make use of the queue is to do a pound include for the uh, queue header. So it's just pound include, angle bracket, queue, angle bracket. And that's going to allow us to be able to construct queues and use all the various member functions associated with the queue class. So the way we go about specifying or creating a queue is just to say queue. So this is very much like what we did with the stack or with the vector, since those were part of the standard template library as well. So we just specify the thing that we're wanting to create. In this case, it's a queue. And then we specify the type. So it could be any type, a perimeter data type, or it could be some type that we've defined ourselves in some particular class. So we'll say Q angle bracket, and to keep things simple, we'll just say that we're going to create a Q that's able to hold ints, and we'll call this uh, my Q. So the first thing that we'll do is maybe just enqueue some, some numbers, some integers into this Q, and, and we'll do this by using a for loop. So we'll say this, we'll say for int i, assignment statement zero, and we'll say as long as i is less than 10, and then we'll do i plus plus for our uh, to increment our, our value of i. And then inside the body, what we'll do is just do a C out and indicate that we're enqueuing. So I'll just say uh, enqueuing if I can spell enqueuing correctly. I think that may be right. It's a hard word to spell. And we'll just specify what we're enqueuing. So we're going to just enqueue whatever the value of i is. So i starts out at zero. And then the last value of i for this particular loop will be 9 since we're doing i less than 10. And then we'll uh, just do an end l here. So we have that. And then the next thing we'll do is actually the, the enqueuing operation, which uh, will make use of the push function. So this is what we do in order to enqueue a particular value. And we're just enqueuing the value of i. So that will just simply push on the values of 0 through 9. Uh, so we'll have 10 values there that are pushed on to this particular queue or enqueued into this queue. And the, the value of 0 will be the oldest value and, and the value of 9 will be the, the newest value. So 0 will be at the head or at the front of the queue and 9 will be at the tail or at the back of the queue. So we can also test out maybe some of the other member functions like size and back. And we'll just do uh, a couple of C out statements here to show that size and back actually work. So we'll say maybe C out insertion operator and say size of my Q. And I don't know, maybe we'll do a colon there space. Insertion operator and then say my Q dot size. And then insertion operator end L. So we'll have that. And then I'm going to just grab this and copy it and paste it down below. And what we'll do is change up this and say the uh, maybe 
the back of my queue. So the back of my queue, and we'll just change this from size uh, to back so we can see what the, the value that's at the back of the queue, which in this case it should be nine. So the back of the queue has the, the newest value. And the last thing that we'll do in this simple program is just simply dequeue all the items that are on our queue. Uh, so doing this will allow us to use the empty function and we'll also use the front, uh, front function to see what we're actually dequeuing before we dequeue it. So we'll just simply make a while loop here. So we'll say while our queue is not empty. So that would be not my queue dot empty. Open print, close print since it is a function. And as long as our queue is not empty, what we're going to do is just a C out operation and then specify what we're dequeuing. So let's see if I can spell dequeuing. So we'll say what we're dequeuing and then just say my queue dot front. So we're going to just specify what's at the front of the queue. So we always know with a queue, whenever we pop something or dequeue something, then that thing is coming off the front of our queue. So it's the oldest item that's in the queue that's being removed whenever we do a dequeue operation. And then we'll do insertion operator indel. And then on the very next line will be the actual action of dequeuing, which in the case of the standard template library in C++, they use the term pop. So we'll say my queue dot pop open print, close print, semicolon. Uh, so this is a fairly simple program, but at least it exercises all the member functions associated with the, the Q class that's part of the C++ standard template library. And let's go ahead and, and save this and build it, see if it actually builds. Looks like everything built okay, and now we will run it and see what the output looks like. So we get a lot of output here, so I'm going to scroll back up here in the console, and you can see that it's enqueuing the values between 0 and 9, and we can see that the size of our queue after enqueuing all those values is 10. We can see that the back value, the last value that was added in was 9, and then the dequeuing operation, you can see that the values are dequeued in the same order that they were enqueued. So we have, once again, the values of 0 through 9. So hopefully you have a good understanding now of the C++ standard template library support for the queue and how to make use of the queue class from the standard template library. So that's it for this video.